Okay, I'm going to recover. Um, you know my story about the old lady at the airport, and I'm rushing for a flight. Uh-huh. And the old lady says, could you help me move my bag? Yes. You know, and everything. And I, I, I said, I'm, I'm so late, ma'am. I am so sorry. And I, I take two steps. And what goes on in my head from my mom, who's been gone for 20-something years? Mm-hmm. You know, what do you think she was saying in my head? I raised you better than that. You need to get back and help that. I'm, here I am, a grown man. My mom's been gone, rest her soul, for a long time. And she's still yelling at me. Yep. You know, we can't get that baggage. We, it's hard to get that stuff out of your head. <laughs> it really is. It, yes, it is. That's called a conscience or whatever you want to call it. And we all carry that stuff. And, boy, it's really hard to get rid of that. Even And some of that stuff is nonsense. It's garbage. Mm-hmm. It's just stuff that, you know, in, I don't know what it is, habits, um, bad advice. Things change sometimes. Sometimes something like our parents told us, you know, 20 years ago, it doesn't really apply today anymore, does it? Right. And think, but it's still in our head. I still roll my socks into a ball. And my wife likes to lay them down flat. We, we've <laughs> had discussions on this. It's, it's silly, and I should be able to get past it. But I don't, because that's the way Mom told me to do my socks. <laughs> now, can I get past it? Of course I can. We have a thing called an intellect. But um, these are all important things that, uh, that relate to how we behave, how we act, how we respond. And, and, and particularly in sales, we have to control ourselves. We want to control the prospect, make them very emotional. We want to control ourselves, though. You're on the freeway. You're driving, and some jerk is just driving real fast and changing lanes and cutting off people. You ever see this guy? Yes. What do you want to do to this guy, honestly? Point him off to the side of the road. <laughs> you're, you're, why don't they have those James Bond machine guns in my head? La- head you know, God, I want to, you know, it's like, have you ever seen the, where a cop pulled over the biggest jerk on the highway? It happens once every 10, 20 years. You see it happen. And you go, yeah, finally. Right. It never happens when it's supposed to. There's never a cop when you need one. Right. <laughs> but do you think when that guy is driving like that and did you ever find yourself speeding up and you want to cut him off now and everything? Yes. I, is that a very intellectual, intelligent response or a very emotionless response? Very emotional. And did you ever do one thing emotionally and then later on, a day or two, a week later, a month later, you calm down, maybe even a half hour later and you said, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, yeah. That, that actually, that just happened uh, yesterday evening. What? Tell me about it. I, I called... I called somebody who, who had a house for sale, and he, sa- he, he sounded like a pretty old guy. Not that that's really relevant, but he sounded like an, an older gentleman. I did not like his – his questions were legitimate, but I didn't like his tone. So I was off the phone with him in about 45 seconds. When, when you said tone, was it condescending, cynical, abrasive, demeaning? What were the words you would use? Um, abrasive. Abrasive is probably the best adjective. And did you hang up on him, or he hung up on you, or it was just a mutual? It, it was pretty. It was pretty much mutual. What would you do differently now that you're on the phone with me? You're calm. You're relaxed. You had a good night's sleep. You're you're off for the next four days, which is just br- <laughs> brilliant. I mean, isn't that you're going to go to the beach or do something fun or? Uh, I'll go to a friend of mine's house. We'll have a cookout, stuff like that. But I'm going. I'm going to the to the folks. Going to my parents tonight. Oh, that's nice. You're a good yeah. son. Thank you. I'm. I got to tell you something. I'm a lot old. I'm older than you. Believe it or as believe it or not, it's really nice to have your parents around still, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, you're lucky. I miss my. I miss my parents tremendously. I'm sure. You know, they've been, but they've been gone a long time. But the. What would you do differently if you could go back in the DeLorean time machine, back to the future? Do you think you'd do anything differently? Well, how do you think you'd solve? How do you think you could control this or make it better or maybe open a – what would you do different? What I did not – what I failed to do, Claude, was empathize with what he wanted. Good word. Um, 
even though even though he started off in an abrasive manner, I, I think I could have calmed him down, maybe disarmed the situation somewhat. I failed to do that um, after work yesterday. I don't. Maybe I just wasn't in the mood. Um, maybe I just wasn't in the right mindset. Okay. But yeah, I reacted childishly. He uh-huh. started off childishly, and I reacted childishly. You, you, and I should have, yeah. You went right down to so who was control? So who was controlling everything? Um, it took it took about ten seconds before he took control. He controlled you. He made you emotional. Yep. He got you out of that intellectual, intelligent, adult state, yep. and he made you brought you right down here. And then you got a little mad, and you you said, hey, mom and dad told me never to take garbage from people. I'm going to give it back to them. You know, you meet a bully, you bully him back. And then you re- maybe you went up somewhere between child and parent, and yep. you gave it back, and you hung up. Nobody got anything. Your blood pressure went up. Yeah, we, we, I didn't really get into it with him, um, but uh, yeah, he knew it. Once he took a tone with me, I think he understood that I that it, that it was done. I was I okay. Was there are four things we get from every call. What are they? Four things we get. The four Maybe. things we look for in every, in every in any sales call. There are four things that we can achieve or look for, or, or uh, four things that can occur. Uh, a yes. A yes. A no. And I'll think about it if you're not doing it right. And a um, I don't know the fourth. Well, oh. that's right, of course. When you get a guy who's just a, pardon my language, a flaming nuclear asshole. Yep. An FNA, we call him. Okay, he's just, he's had a bad day, and his job is to make everyone else's worse. You ever meet people like this? They're, you probably have someone like that at work. They're just a nasty son of a bitch, and they get off making everyone else miserable. Every place at work has one person like this. Yeah, I, I have dealt with them before, yes. Or, or you have a neighbor like this, or somebody in your church. or this. It, we call them gadflies. A gadfly is that fly you keep swatting at it like a horse fly, and it just keeps coming back. Do you ever have one of those? Nope. You know, all they, li- all that fly lives for is to just annoy you and drive you crazy, and that's how they're stimulated. That it's almost a pseudo sexual stimulation. They get off giving, having other people react negatively. This right. is this is this is their, uh, this is the. Uh, this is their stimuli, it, okay? Oh, and, it, right. it, and there are people like this. It could be a mental health issue. It's maybe their wiring is wrong. I, maybe it's just the way they were raised. Mm-hmm. And you occasionally meet people, and the way and the way to defeat them is to not react to them, is not right. to come down. And this is hard. I'm this is the pot calling the kettle black. You know, this is the hypocrisy, Claude Diamond style, because I'm a very emotional guy. I right. cry. I cry at dog movies. Okay, I get you know. I go from intellectual to emotional real quick. I try to go back to intellectual. I, by sheer force of will, because I know this is not going to get me anywhere. Being all emotional, being intelligent and intellectual is a much better place to be. It's just hard. It is. We're all hot. We're all hardwired with something called flight or fright. Yes. This is our uh, evolutionary process to protect ourselves. To when a situation is dangerous or something, we have to either defend ourselves or get the hell out of the way, right. and those those are emotional responses, really. So it's built into us. We're not Mr. Spock, you know. Right. Did you see the new Star Trek yet? It's very good. Oh, is it good? No, yeah, I don't know if you're a Trekkie. I love Star Trek. I am. I, yeah, I am. I, I haven't kept up with the last two, but I'm going to catch up on it. You can see him on Hulu, Hulu or Netflix. Uh, the the last go one or two. If you have it. So I want you to role play. I want you to. So this guy had an ad in the paper, right? Um, I got it off of a website. Oh, what kind? Like Zillow, Trilio, uh, Redfin? You ever use Realty Store? Uh, no. Is okay. Th- yeah, I use I used Realty Store. They're like Zillow. Um, okay. Okay. 
Um, so uh, you could have called. Did you just have his name or phone number or anything? I had, his name, I had his name and number, yeah. Okay, let's role play it. So you be him just like it was, okay? Okay. S say hello. Hello. Yeah, Mr. McDonald? Yes. Yeah, uh, this is Claude Diamond. I have your phone number in front of me. Uh, uh, you have a house uh, for sale still? It, are you looking to uh, buy it for yourself or are you looking to rent it out? I, I don't know. Is that important? Uh, I, I don't really know. Is the house even available still? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm looking for an investment property in that area. You mind if I ask you a few questions, see if we can do business today? So, well, but are you looking to buy it for yourself, or do you want to put somebody else in it? I don't know. I, I don't know anything about your house yet. Okay. Is, is it, does, it really, does it really matter either way? Is there a problem? Right, right, right there. That's what I should have done, and I didn't. But, okay. The the oh, you know what would have been the best answer, and I didn't do it. Ask me that question again. Let me let me step back here and do this better. Yeah. I could have done it better. Okay, all right. I thought. Wait a second. Did I say I don't know before? You, yeah, the first time. Yeah. Like the first time I asked you the question. Yeah. Yes, you did say I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was the right answer. Okay. You could say I don't know, and then ask him a question, redirect, to get control back, I, or or you can just say, you know, I don't know. I don't know enough about your house yet. You mind if I ask a few questions? Maybe, maybe I'm looking to buy a house uh, possibly today in that area. Okay, but are you looking to buy it for yourself, or do you want to put somebody else in it? I don't know. I, you know, it might be something I want for myself, or maybe it's something I want as an investment property. I'm not really sure yet. I'm just calling you from your ad. Someone told me uh, your house was for sale. Why, uh, why do you ask me that question, Mr. McDonald? I'm curious. Because it was a family, it was a family property, and my sister lives right next door, and we don't want somebody in it that she's not going to like. Good, so po good point. Good point. Somebody else in it, we're not interested. Okay, no, it's a good point. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. So, if it was somebody you approved, uh, a professional person with a good income and a nice family, would, that wouldn't be what your sister wants, right? Okay. See, I, I. Right before, when he asked me the second time there, I, I was done. I was, but. Exactly. And right. you see, what you got to do is gain control again. And this is a thinking man's right. game. This is tough. You know, oh, it's not yeah. like, it's not like chess where you got 90 seconds to make your move or no. whatever. You know, this is a conversation going back and forth like a ping pong ball. Right. And, and this is, this is why we always practice, practice, oh. practice. Right. And, and you, you know, and then you could go back and stroke him. And say, you know, it's a good point. I've had, you know, if it was my sister, I wouldn't want to put some kind of creep next door with a lot of barking dogs or someone who's not a nice person. So good for you for looking out for your sister like that. That's really, you're good. You sound like a nice person, a good brother. So I, thought, I thought through all that about a half hour after I hung up the phone. You see? All that. Jackson, you should have done this. You should, yeah. And th this is, that's good. Because what I want you to do is after every call, you do what is called a, a a self-diagnostic. Yes. It's when you say, oh, you know, I could have made this a lot better. I could have turned this around. If I did it this way instead of that way, this is how you learn. Yeah. Besides practicing with me. So let's do that. Is this good for you? You find this in, uh, um, is this educational for you? It absolutely is. I'll tell you what, Claude, and I thought about this last week. I, I, had, a, I had an aha moment during our conversation last week. You sort of quizzed me, if you remember. Um, you you played the role as the son of a bitch. <laughs> I do it good, yeah. don't I? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then I went through it, and yeah, in in doing that, going through that process, something clicked last week. But how to uh, what questions to answer? So yeah, uh, you wanna actually do things so that they don't see what you're doing while right. you're doing it. Your questions flow um, with redirection, with so much the finesse, the acting mm -hmm. ability. And you, we, the finesse is usually the stroking, the nurturing, or, you know, you say, you know, it's a good question, Mr. McDonald. McDonald, you know, good for you. If it was my sister, I would feel the exact same way. 
You know, what happens when instead of butting heads, I compliment him because that's, is that unreasonable for him to want to protect his sister? No, not at all. You know, and he sees you as maybe somebody who wants to put some druggies or, a, 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 you know, put eight pit bulls next door to his sister or something like that. Right. Yeah. But he started asking me questions like that before I even told him I was an investor. Okay, and what you want to do is say, and you want to slow things down so you can regain control. You know, I don't know. I'm not really sure. You must have brought that up for a, a reason, Mr. McDonald. Could you, could you help me out a little here? Could you share that with me? Just memorize that little part. I'm taping this for you. Say, I don't know. Thank You must have asked that for a very good reason. Uh, could you share that with me, sir? And, or stroke them or nurture them and slow it down so you have time to think. Yeah. So we say, you know, I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. You know, no, I don't think anyone's ever asked me, but I'm sure that there's a perfectly good reason you brought that up, Mr. McDonald. Could you, could you share that with me? See, I just bought myself 15, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Slow it down so I can think, what's going on with this guy? Why is he like this and, and everything? And then you find out. So let's role play it. I'll be, the, I'll be him again. Hello? Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Diamond, uh, I see you have a house for sale. Um, is that still available? It's available. What are you, an investor? You gonna live? You gonna live in it? You gonna live in it, or are you looking to buy it? Well, you know, at this point, Mr. Diamond, I, I really don't know. Um, that is an interesting question you bring up. Um, what? Why do you ask that? Because I'm getting a lot of phone calls from a lot of guys who just want to take my house and bottom feed. And, and they want to put somebody, strangers in there. My sister lives next door, and I'm not going to put some drug-pushing uh, uh, jerks with pit bulls or something next door to her. That's my sister. I see. I see where you're coming from. That's, that's perfectly understandable. You're looking to protect your sister. You want to keep, you want to keep your family property nice. Um, you probably have a lot of memories in that house. See, stop. Perfect. You can't do better than what you just did. Yeah. You perfectly change the dynamics of the whole. Now, he may be a son of a bitch and come after you again. There's, like I said, the gadflies, the nasty people, the Leonard antics of the world. That's what a, it's a neighbor we had in California who was like this. <laughs> okay. You, you know. <laughs> and the thing is, you didn't get caught up in his bullshit, in his, in his emotional, his outrage, his attack at you. He may be having a bad day. Maybe this... Most people, here's the way I look at it. I think most people are decent. I agree. I think the glass is half full, not half empty. I think most people are nice people. They're, they help old ladies across the street. They hold doors open. They kiss their children goodnight and say their prayers with them. I think most people are pretty good. But when it comes to business and they have a salesman call them, mm -hmm. or their perception is someone is trying to manipulate them, lie to them, pressure them in a salesy fashion, I think they turn into monsters. Right. Right. Especially if they've been putting up with a lot of bullshit from previous phone calls.